Have you ever noticed how all drummers are spazzed out weirdos? Or how all bass players secretly wish they knew how to play a real guitar? Well, I have. I love making broad generalizations about musicians based on, well, pretty much nothing. And that's what I'm going to do in this video, after you click like. You might think that you have your own unique personality, but you don't. Who you are as a person is defined solely by what instrument you play. You might think of yourself as an honest, loving, ambitious, fun guy who enjoys reading and taking long walks on the beach. But to everybody else, you're just Jeff the bassist. You might think you chose your instrument, but you didn't. It chose you. And your instrument tells the world everything it cares to know about you. Bass guitar. You fucking rock. Or at least you want to rock. It's always been your dream to play in a band. For years, you envisioned yourself on stage, shredding out crazy guitar solos in front of millions of adoring fans. But then you bought a used six string and quickly realized that your fat, clumsy sausage fingers wouldn't be shredding anything, other than maybe some cheese to go on a sausage, egg, and cheese sandwich. But your dream isn't to make breakfast sandwiches. It's to make music in the simplest way possible with the least amount of effort you can get away with. Which is why when you realize there's an instrument that looks like a real guitar, but has bigger frets, less strings, and is much easier to play, you instantly knew it was for you. Being a bass player is like being a dentist. No kid says, I want to be a dentist when I grow up. They say, I want to be a doctor. Then when they do grow up, bomb the MCAT, and get rejected from every medical school they apply to, only then does a career in dentistry start to look good. Same with the bass. No one dreams of being a bassist. Only after realizing you don't have the talent to play a regular guitar, the rhythm to play the drums, or the ego to be a singer, does the bass begin to look attractive. But at the end of the day, a dentist is still technically a doctor, and the bass is still technically a guitar. Rhythm guitar. If playing nothing but eighth notes on four strings is too simple for you, but soloing anything other than a basic pentatonic scale in the key of E minor is too difficult, you're likely a rhythm guitarist, the most easily replaceable member of any band. That's because if you ask 10 random musicians what instrument they play, nine of them are going to say guitar. Granted, one of those nine might actually be a bass player who left out the bass part and just answered guitar to sound cool, but the other eight, rhythm guitarists. How do you know they're rhythm and not lead guitarists if they simply answered guitar? Because if they played lead guitar, they would have told you so at least five times. If you dropped a guitar off the top of the Empire State Building and it hit some random person walking down the street, there's like a one in three chance the person it hits is a rhythm guitarist. They're fucking everywhere. Rhythm guitar is the bass guitar of regular guitar. It's no one's first choice, but it'll get you on stage regardless. And being a rhythm guitarist is a sweet gig for us introverts. You're not quite in the spotlight, but you're still close enough to it to still get groupies. It's easy. In fact, your only responsibility as a rhythm guitarist is to stay out of the way of the lead guitarist and the singer. They're the ones in the spotlight. All you have to do is stand behind them, strum a few chords, and pray to God that you don't fuck up. Because if you do, the band will replace you with one of the hundreds of other rhythm guitarists out in the crowd before the set's even over. Lead guitar. When someone says Guns N' Roses guitarist, you immediately think of Izzy Stradlin, right? Wrong. Let's try another one. Picture in your mind the guitarist for ACDC. Are you thinking of Malcolm Young? Of course not. Are you thinking of Angus Young and you were thinking of Slash before him? Why? Because they're the real guitarist of the band. The lead guitarist. Nobody leaves a rock concert saying, did you see the way that rhythm guitarist player seamlessly switched from a B minor to an A major seventh? That was sick. No. Odds are, aside from the rhythm guitarist himself, nobody even noticed he was there including half his self-absorbed band members. But people will leave a concert talking about the lead guitarist's crazy 14-minute guitar solo. Granted, 90% of those people are rhythm guitar players going on and on about how impossibly sick it was. And the other 10% are lead guitarists talking shit, pointing out the one 64th note the performer got wrong out of the otherwise entirely flawless solo. Either way, at least someone was paying attention. And lead guitarists love attention. They're the only band member whose ego is on par with the lead singer's. But while many singers openly envy their lead guitarist's skill and devotion to their instrument, all lead guitarists secretly resent their singers. Why? Because while they were sacrificing, spending thousands of hours practicing the guitar, the singer was practicing safe sex, aka the spray and pray method, with every hot young woman in town, including the guitarist's girlfriend. And now that the two are in a band together, a band the guitarist writes all the songs for, he figured he'd be getting just as much pussy as the singer. Nope, not even close. He might get more than the bassist, but he's not pulling in anywhere near as much top shelf ass as the singer does every night, and it irks the fuck out of him. As much as lead guitarists hate singers, they love themselves twice as much. 
And the only thing lead guitarists love talking about more than how awesome they are is their guitars and how awesome they are at playing them. Look at I can do this lead guitar. So if you're some groupie who wants to meet a lead guitarist, just ask him questions about his gear and agree when he tells you how awesome he is at using that gear. Then, after a while, if you're lucky, maybe he'll introduce you to the lead singer, the one you've really been wanting to fuck all along. Singer. AKA the front man. Or the front woman. Let's go with front person. I know what you're going to ask. If someone steps in front of the front person, do they automatically become the new front person? The answer is no. The original front person, the one with a microphone, remains the front person. It doesn't matter if anyone stands in front of the front person. Stupid question, by the way. Literally anyone can become a lead singer. As long as you have vocal cords and aren't entirely tone deaf, you can be the front person of a band. Even a one-man band. Like that dude. Actually, I take that back. You can be a tone deaf singer nowadays. As long as your mixing engineer knows how to use auto-tune, or Melodyne if you want your vocals to sound human and not like a robot who smokes two packs of Marlboro Reds a day, you can be totally deaf and still sound like a pro. Everybody wants to be a lead singer. Why? Because singing takes the least amount of work but gets the most amount of praise, aka groupies. Being a singer is fucking easy, physically and mentally. There's no lugging around a bunch of drum hardware, having to carry Marshall stacks up and down stairs, no memorizing chord charts and practicing scales. You just show up, late as always, do a quick warm up, la 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 la, and you're good to go. That's all there is to it. But just because being a lead singer is so easy that literally anyone can do it, doesn't mean everyone wants to. It takes a special kind of asshole to want to get up on stage to showcase their lack of real musical ability night after night. Just like how power-hungry egomaniacs are the only people who want to become politicians, only egomaniacal attention whores want to become lead singers. That's because all lead singers, despite overflowing with cockiness on the outside, are all fragile little insecure pussies on the inside, desperate for fame because they believe it will fill the empty void in their soul they haven't been able to fill with drugs, alcohol, and meaningless sex. Although those things definitely help. Drummer. All drummers are fucking weirdos. Okay, that's not fair. 99% of drummers are fucking weirdos. It's 24-7 with these people. A guitarist can only play guitar. A pianist can only play piano. But to a drummer, the world is his drum kit. And he's more than happy to play that shit all day, every day. In class trying to take an exam? Good luck with that drummer sitting behind you. He finished his test in two minutes by randomly answering all 100 multiple choice questions. Now, for the next 45 minutes until the end of class, he's practicing YYZ by tapping it on his desk. Or you're trying to pass time by reading while waiting at the DMV, but the skinny, long-haired kid sitting across from you is double basing his way through rain and blood for the 20th time. Drummers march to the beat of their own drum which would be fine if the rest of the band wasn't also reliant on that beat. But to a drummer, the beat never ends. That's why during practice, when the lead guitarist is trying to explain to the bass player how he fucked up the last song, the drummer will just start hammering out a random beat, totally oblivious to the fact that people are trying to talk. Or at the end of a song, the drummer will add a never-ending fill that ends up being longer than the song itself. If a fish stops swimming, it dies. If a drummer stops drumming, well, I don't know what happens because I've never actually seen it. Every drummer I've ever met is constantly tapping on something, bringing whatever beat is playing in their head out into the real world to annoy the rest of us. That's their real talent. Not all drummers can keep a steady beat, but they all sure know how to steadily annoy the fuck out of the people around them. Multi-instrumentalist. These people are the fucking worst. They think that just because they can play Mary Had a Little Lamb on eight different instruments, they're sophisticated musicians. They're not. In fact, there's a direct correlation between how many instruments you play and how unlikable other musicians find you. That's because instead of going out into the world and developing social skills, you spend your time fiddling away at the used fiddle you just bought for no reason other than to prove to yourself that you can learn to play it. Multi-instrumentalists are the jack of all trades of the music world. Player of all instruments, master of none. Due to deep-seated insecurities and serious commitment issues, the multi-instrumentalist never sticks to any one instrument long enough to master it. Unless you count master in the skin flute, because all multi-instrumentalists are virtuoso level masturbationists. It's the one instrument they'll commit to practicing every day. At least once. Sometimes twice. Sometimes more. The upside to being a multi-instrumentalist is that your diverse musical talents attract a diverse group of interesting, attractive people. The downside is that since you're so busy trying to maintain your proficiency at 10 different instruments, you don't have time to actually go out and interact with those people. 
but at least you've got 10 different instruments you can use to write songs about how lonely you are. Tell me, what instrument do you play besides guitar? I already know that you play guitar because everybody and their brother plays guitar. But tell me in the comments, besides guitar, what's your instrument? And what does it say about you? You're so